fumble a bag. Now I will not fumble a bag. Fumble a bag. Now I will not fumble a bag. Act like you know how this goes. What's going on? We are live, late night live stream, teaching the toolkit. Thanks everybody for joining. It's me, Jake, here, head of community at Spatial, and we have a special guest today. Believe it or not, that is not Hawa, who's normally on the stream. <laughs> we got Metaverse Josh in the house. What's going on, Josh? Thanks hey, for what's being going here. on, everybody? Thanks. Got here in his time machine in his DeLorean. So <laughs> yeah. Made a it special, like a, special trip. I feel like it's a very appropriate uh, background for uh, what we're going to be teaching today, which is to build a hoverboard in Spatial. Uh, one of my favorite things uh, since I just learned how to do it. <laughs> so I'm happy to share <laughs> Now you're going to teach us. Yeah. So now There you go. Uh, you and go. if you're new to, uh, at least to my stream, that's typically what I do. I learn how to do something and then I show everyone else how to do it. Uh, and so, yeah, today we're going to be showing everybody... Um, Actually, sort of how to do two things. You know, we talked about that a minute ago, but uh, we're going to be showing you sort of how to build a vehicle because it's essentially what uh, a hoverboard is. And then we're going to teach you how to modify um, what is essentially a basic vehicle at that point into uh, a rideable hoverboard. So, All right. That sounds awesome. I'm ready to get my hoverboard on. This is like, honestly, I think one of the things that like, I know everyone at Spatial has been like, you know, as a company level has been like dreaming of for forever. Like Anand, like our one of our co-founder CEO, so like wanted hoverboard and Spatial for forever. Like we we even at the beginning of the year we dropped kind of like a, a teaser for Spatial of like what what it'll look like later this year, and it was all just like erasing a hoverboard around like a city, and, like, and that's been like and last year we had this. Uh, this kind of smaller version of spatial called Insta Spatial. It was like, how can you like load up uh, uh, an NFT gallery like in a mobile browser like super fast? And I actually had like a button you could press and, like go on a hoverboard and go around like your virtual gallery on a hoverboard. So there's just been this thing at Spatial of just like really wanting that Back to the Future vibe. And now like you were one of the first, if not the first, to like actually build it and make it like working in spatial. Like you, there was Cyber Nerd Baby, there was like others. Um, and I know you guys like collab and chat all the time so it's like awesome to to like actually make that a reality and now so hopefully everyone watching and this is going to be recorded and it'll be up on our youtube and stuff like that too um people will be able to like now everyone can build a hoverboard and we'll just be i think like your tweet on twitter was like after tonight there's just gonna be hoverboards everywhere everywhere everywhere, everywhere. the buzz light meme so i am i am excited so yeah let's just so uh, let's just jump into it yeah, sure. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, my Unity uh, project pulled up here. So uh, a few things that you want to do to get started. Uh, first of all, you want to have a hoverboard model, which this one I grabbed from Sketchfab. Um, I'm going to be using the classic uh, Mattel hoverboard model, but you can grab pretty much anything, skateboard deck, whatever, you know, without wheels um, and turn it into a hoverboard if you'd like. Uh, from there... We're going to be following the basic uh, vehicle guide. Um, and Jake, if you want to help me out, uh, I actually don't have the guide up uh, with me. So what I, I'm going to do for now uh, is I'm going to just start with the basic uh, uh, vehicle guide, if you will. And I'll show the shortcut that I showed you earlier uh, for those that you know don't necessarily want to go through it the hard way. So the first thing you want to do, you know, if this was a car or a truck or anything else um, that you were starting with, you want to start with, a, a, you know, a model. Um, I like to create just a, a, a 
you know, basic game object to start off with. So I have something that I can apply all of my uh, uh, vehicle settings to without the model in case I want to replace it. And we'll talk about that later. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, inside of my project here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me back up a little bit. Um, I'm just assuming everybody kind of has, uh, you know, Unity installed at this point. I guess since you guys had already kind of taught that in a previous. Yeah, um, we yeah we've yeah we've gone through that. So there's definitely like an assumption here that like everyone's got Unity set up. You're using 2021.3.21. Um, everyone's gra like grab the starter template. So if you go to docs.spatial.io, um, I'll put that in the uh, the bottom here. Uh, if you go to docs or yeah yeah docs.spatial.io or spatial.io slash docs, um, get the starter template. That's got everything you need, all the example templates, even a sample vehicle that I think you'll show uh, a little bit later, and sample scenes. It's everything you need to get started. Um, I also put if you're on um, if you're on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook, I put a link in the chat for a, a Sketchfab model as well for the hoverboard. Um, so you can get that from Sketchfab uh, and then also the link to the, the vehicle documentation. Yeah, right there. There you go. Uh, right, I just want to make sure I had that handy there. Yeah, that'll walk you through. Yeah, just double check all the different properties and stuff that we're going to go through uh, setting up. But yeah, like you said, a hoverboard, surprisingly, even though it doesn't have wheels, like visually, not too different from a regular car. So... I'm going to go ahead and follow the uh, the vehicle guide, and I have it here, so I'll go back and forth so I can make sure I follow all these steps. If you want to follow along at home, um, just do the same thing I'm doing here, which would be for this vehicle, and I will show you where you need to make modifications in order to make your hoverboard. Um, so first thing we're going to do with step one, uh, change the layer to vehicles. I'm going to go back to my Unity project here. Uh, so I've made a hoverboard uh, an empty object. I've got it highlighted here. I'm going to change the default layer to vehicles. And that's going to, I'm going to just go ahead and start with that. That's going to give me sort of an empty object that I can start with, uh, that I can apply any of the um, configuration of the vehicle that I'll show you later through the rigid body and other, other uh, components that I can keep separate from the model in case I want to replace it. Uh, and so in this case, we certainly will. Um, now from here, the next step is to add the rigid body component. So we're going to hit add component with the hoverboard uh, empty object selected. I'll type in rigid body here. And these are the default uh, values here. We'll leave that for now. Um, we got to make sure that uh, we're going to add the mass of the vehicle. Now, this is important because for a normal vehicle, it would be heavy, right? But for a, hover a hoverboard, I just sort of play around with these values a little bit. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my prefab that I already have made uh, right here, and I'm going to bring it in so I can sort of confirm some of these uh, values from what I know works. Um, and so it looks like I just left the default uh, cart values in there uh, from earlier for now. So if that seems to work, we'll just leave that. Um, and so in here, for now, we can put 1,500 and for, let's see, the other two values were... Uh, drag and angular drag looks like I left that at point two for each, and that mass is in kilograms too for for people who who are wondering out there. I, think I accidentally launched something after my mouse fell on the floor there. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, yeah, we, let's go back to Unity here. So now I've got uh, my empty hoverboard um, object here. I've got my rigid body component couple of things um, configured here. I'm going to change a couple other values. I'm pretty sure that we modified here. Um, yeah, let me go and make sure all that matches. I think we're good there. So yeah, and you can play around with some of this. Like I said, now let me sort of give you an example though why I left this heavy. I tried to make it at one point, very realistic, and I said, you know, hoverboard is not going to be that heavy, right? I'm just going to make it a few pounds or something. Um, and you'll quickly learn that, at least in Unity, there's a thing that it tries to emulate, which is physics. And if you're standing on something as a, a human, which it assumes that, you know, maybe you're 100 pounds or 200 pounds or something like that, and you're standing on this object that's only a few pounds, you're just going to fall right over. Uh, and that's sort of what happened. 
and so, especially if you make uh, the rigid body and everything, you know, sort of match your hoverboard. And so I left this sort of heavy um, to make sure that I did not fall over from a video. Uh, and I would recommend that you do the same. Uh, and so right now you're not going to see much. You know, again, this is just an empty uh, game object here. I'm going to continue working with it, though. Uh, so we're going to place this uh, empty game object for the driver position. And this is something we're going to change later. Because with, uh, with, a, with a vehicle, at least, you know, you're going to be sitting in it. And so it, it sort of plays that sitting animation. And we'll talk about this um, later. But we modify this later in the in the build because we're going to replace that sitting uh, pose with a standing animation. So it looks like he's actually you know, surfing on the board there. Uh, and you can get that for free from uh, Mixamo if you want to put that in the chat for me. Uh, yeah, Jake, I got you. Since that's also a nice free resource for everybody to use. I love Mixamo. That's honestly like one of my favorite things. Something surprising that like, a lot of people don't know about. But right. it's a free Adobe tool for animations. So well, That's why I like to mention it uh, here. So, um, you know, if this is your first time hearing about it, look, you're going to be really excited to see some of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're not talking about custom emotes tonight. Except, well, I guess we'll have to sort of in order to we can touch on get it, this yeah. guy standing on it. But you know, once you unlock that for people, they'll go crazy. So that's a whole mm -hmm. other night. Mm -hmm. All right, so for this, we're going to make this. Uh, it's again, we'll just call it the seat, um, you know, spot for now or whatever. But again, he's going to be standing up when we get done with it. Uh, this uh, empty spot, as long as it is, uh, I think it child of this uh hard to see all this stuff i'm sorry i gotta turn on some Let's see we still need what is it a uh, bots collider in order to see all that there we go so we gotta add a mesh or bots collider i'm gonna add a box one now since we actually don't have any kind of actually you know what i think this this assumes that we have the car in there already doesn't it Right, yeah. So a box collider, you can put a box collider. You can use a mesh collider or a box collider. Um, either one. Box That's colliders. Good. If something like this, probably a box collider is, is a little bit better. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and put the model in there at this point, so that way we can have a visual of where to you know add the collider. I do use the box collider where I can, and so this is a decent example of how to do that. Um, so I'm actually going to add that as a uh, child of my. Oops. Control Z that out of there. I'm going to add it as a, um, a child of my hoverboard object there. I'm going to rename that to uh, Bots Collider. And then we're going to add the Bots Collider component. And from here, if you notice inside of the Bots Collider uh, component here, there's a small button. If you hit this, it'll actually let you edit this box. And so now if you'll spin around the object a tad, you can kind of see where the box is and you can edit, you know, the size and shape of that box. Now's a good time to go ahead and do that. Um, at least in this case, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, perfect or anything like that. It's enough to uh, make sure that, you know, if you run into things that it sort of matches what, what you're looking at. Sorry, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> this. Uh, <laughs> Like this, uh, 3D sometimes gets me. It's hard to see um, exactly where these points are, but you got to be really careful. Yeah, sometimes going into like the isometric view, like for that helps too. Sure. Good enough for government work, right? There we go. That's, <laughs> a, that's what we used to say when I was enlisted. All right, uh, now we've got um, the Boss Collider added. I'm going to move on to the next. Uh, we've got our... Uh, driver seat position, which I didn't really move much, but again, uh, we're going to move that later anyway, so I'm just going to skip that for now. Um, got our box collider, add center of mass. So again, you know, for a hoverboard, it's not too terribly important that it's, uh, you know, in a certain spot or anything like that. I just put it in the center. So I'm going to create another empty game object. I'm going to call it center of mass. And if I'm going too fast for anybody, don't worry. I got a video that shows you how to do all of this on vehicles if you need it. Um, you know, you can always go there for a recap. I'm just going to put the center of mass right there in the center of the board. Make sure that it's uh, actually center so I don't fall over. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Next. Um, now, here's the fun part. 
because we're not actually making wheels, uh, it is a hoverboard after all, we get to make the wheel colliders. They can kind of be whatever you want as long as they're a decent size for, for riding around on a hoverboard. The, uh, the part where you actually have to match this up with real wheels, that's actually kind of difficult for some people. It's going to be super easy for us this time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we do need to make our wheel colliders. And so what we'll do, um, I'm actually just going to make another empty game object. I'm going to call it uh, wheel colliders. And again, for a, uh, for a hoverboard, this doesn't necessarily have to be anything of a certain shape or size. I'll give you an example of what I'm going to do here, and, and you can make yours uh, you know, whatever size or, or that you, you feel comfortable with. Um, and so here I'm going to create uh, four empty game objects. Now that I've done that. And you'll just want to name these in such a way that you know what's front left, front right, um, and then rear left and rear right. So I usually just do something uh, simple, like FL for front light, uh, uh, left, I'm sorry, uh, collider, and the same for the rest. And now that I have these named, they're all in the same place. So what I want to do is I actually want to sort of move these into the general uh, sort of area that they would be if they were, you know, wheels. Um, and so for the front left, um, I want this object about uh, here, I guess. Let's see. All right. You know, I'm actually going to delete the left. And I'm sorry, the right on both sides, because I found that it was actually easier to copy them and just move them over so I can make sure they aligned right. I think I'm just going to do that for the back as well. Start over. And now I know that's aligned right, the left side. And just to, I saw there's a question in the in the chat too. So Josh is working off of uh, the starter template, the spatial starter template. Versus, uh, you can do this. In, you can do this now in a totally blank scene in Unity, uh, and then bring it over to the spatial toolkit starter template. But you'll definitely need the starter template, um, which you can get from docs.spatial.io, because that will that's going to allow you or Josh, it's everyone, to publish this hoverboard to spatial um, and also contains all the components that you need, like the animation components and uh, the uh, we'll be using some visual script nodes as well for the vehicle. So you'll need all that that's in the starter template. So definitely recommend getting that if you're kind of following us along live. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't, you know, show where to go download all of that. Of course, you know, all I did was just load a blank scene uh, but I do have all the, you know, spatial SDK stuff in here. Um, you know, so this is something you want to start out with. You don't want to try to add this later or something, right? Um, and so I didn't show how to do that. Um, again, I was just assuming here that everybody kind of was that far already. But... No, we're good. <laughs> Excuse me. We're good enough. So now I've got, uh, I've got these collider objects in here, and, and I actually want to add the wheel collider components now. Um, and so you just want to search for that on, after you add the add co uh, component button. Wheel collider is what I want here. And you just want to do that times four. Okay. Now, if I go up to, well, actually, you know what? I've completely uh, added those in the wrong direction. So the way that I'm going to have to fix that is by moving my bots collider. And my model, that's going to confuse a lot of people, Jake, um, mm -hmm. I think. So, you know, my hoverboard is um, facing the wrong way. And so a lot of people probably won't have to deal with that problem. Of course, if they do, then I guess I just showed them how to fix that. Uh, one thing you want to do once you get to this point is make sure when you click that your, your top uh, level object here, that the model of your hoverboard is facing the right direction. You can verify that by looking at the blue arrow here. 
uh, and that your wheel colliders are facing the right direction. So you see that they don't look pretty. They don't look exactly right, but we can change that now that we can sort of have everything set up, right? Um, and so yeah, and that's the that's the Z forward direction. And also, I think also good to make sure that you're working with the pivot point and the local uh, a local axis there in the top. Yeah, so you're on pivot, right. and then the one next to that is on the uh, local coordinates. Yeah, right. So you're Thanks. so you're good. So at least on my tutorial video, I showed a little bit about that. And that's a good thing to point out. This is, gave me a huge headache when first trying to learn how to do all of this. Um, so yeah, make sure when you're dealing with these wheel colliders that you have your, you know, your pivot point selected to make sure you're, you're modifying all this correctly. Um, and so if you're following along at home and you're making all this from scratch and you're kind of at this point, I'm looking at my wheels here. I'm not really happy with where they're positioned, but at least I know, you know, what's what, um, and they're in the right spaces. So in order for me to modify this, I could simply, you know, you, you make sure you're at the top level so that you can see all of the, um, uh, the pieces of your rigid body and the wheels, and then you can sort of modify where some of this stuff is. So, uh, now the important thing to note is that since it's not a real vehicle, it's not, uh, so important that it's exactly accurate where it is because none of this is going to be visual. I just want to make sure that my uh, that my vehicle actually drives in a way that I'll it'll be able to stand up and not fall over. And so one of the things that I found is that having the wheels sort of out a little bit more than they should be if they were real wheels helps sort of ground um, you know your character on this thing while you're driving it and make sure you don't fall over left and right. And so I'd still recommend leaving them sort of where they are here, but you may want to spread them out a tad. So at least for the front ones, I'm going to move them up just a tad. And I want to move them up exactly the same amount. So what I'm going to do is grab the C coordinates from that one and just paste it into the other um, front wheel there. And so if we go to the top, you'll notice that my front wheels, actually, they don't match it, so I must have grabbed the wrong one. The front right, front left, they are in the same. Yeah, so let's undo what I did there. I think I'm good now. Nope. Bear with me, Jake. I'm trying to control the Z like a pro. There we no, go. You're good. Yeah. All right. So now uh, I want to make sure that I, I move both the front and let's see. So yeah, I, I must have mislabeled my colliders here like a dummy. That's what I've <laughs> done. So let's fix this real quick. That's a front left. Uh, that's not a back left. That's actually a. That looks like the front left. That one. Is that front right? That is a front left. So I've got everything all out of whack. Let's fix that real quick. That's the front right one. Everybody following along at home says, look at Josh. He's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his lesson right. This is... Let's see. So there, those are just backwards. So I'll just rename those. Let's see. I think that happened from when I had to rotate some of this stuff. There's a little craziness going on. So that's the uh, back right. So okay. Back right. Yeah, that looks good. So now that I've got everything labeled correctly, I can actually just select both of those at the same time, move those forward, select both of those, and move those slightly back. Yes, yeah, so you're kind of like me. building like a almost like a little off-road vehicle, right? Like in terms of like yeah. where the wheels are, you got like this wide base, and they're kind of close together, like front to back, but then. I think we'll also get into like maybe like the suspension a little bit too. So it gives you that like as you're moving, like say like over like hills and stuff, it kind of gives like that almost like hoverboard kind of vibe. Of Correct. That's exactly what gives us that kind of feel. And so when you get when you make these wheels kind of big, I know it kind of looks goofy here, um, but when you get all of this right, it sort of drives like you said, just like a vehicle would, where you got that suspension and all, and you get this real. Uh, feel of that it, it looks and feels like it's hovering you know instead of just kind of zooming like what it would feel like if you just jumped on top of an object that had an animator right and that's what we've been doing in the past 
this is going to feel a little bit more like uh, that drivable uh, yeah. object that we're all looking for. And so now, you know, I've got uh, at least this sort of, you know, the skeleton of this thing uh, sort of built. And then I'm going to go back to my instructions here. So, uh, of course, we have to build a couple of interactables. That's the next step. So these, you know, um, at least in the example, it looks like the first interactable was created as a, um, a child object of the top uh, level object. So we could just right click spatial and uh, interactable. And that's going to give us the, that button at least. I'm going to rename this one to uh, drive for now. And <clears throat> then I, I want to say, I don't, I don't think it matters, but I've, I've just been trying to sort of, um, you know, follow the same uh, as the example. And I think it was a child of the model that the uh, exit was. But I, I really do think that you can just put it anywhere. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, it just has to be as long as it's a child of the, the vehicle. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to make another one. Just yeah, so that yeah, they can be anywhere, um, right? Like as long as you're with a child of the vehicle, basically everything below that's kind of like organization, like keeping your wheel colliders organized and other things like that. It's like up to you how you want to keep that organized. Um, and the the purpose of the, like the interactable. So we haven't gotten into this really yet. On like the live stream, we do have the uh, we have and we actually haven't done a tutorial video on it yet on the spatial channel. But for those um, who haven't used the interactables or don't know what that is, so it's basically allows, it's it's a button, allows you to interact with stuff, right? So you can walk up to, you know, a, an object. And if you're on the desktop web, you can hit the F key. Um, if you're on mobile, you can just tap on it on screen. In VR, you should be able to, uh, like, point and click on it as well. And it allows you to do stuff, like trigger things. So, like, it's like pressing a button, you know, on a dashboard and it can do stuff. Um, and in this case, we're adding the interactable. So it's kind of like hitting like the A key and like Grant the Thirty when you walk up to a vehicle and a lot, this is going to, what's going to trigger the whole getting in the vehicle and taking over control of the vehicle kind of flow. Um, so right. that's what we are adding. We're, and we need one for both getting in the vehicle. And then when you're in the vehicle, you need technically a different one that you click on to get out of the vehicle. So that's why we're adding two here. Right. Um, now, another thing that I'm going to do, because this is just what you would do if you were building any vehicle here, you're going to want to go to the examples inside of the spatial SDK. We're going to go into the uh, space golf course driving folder, into the golf ca cart folder, and then we're going to grab the golf cart example. I like to just go ahead and put it into the scene so that I got quick access to it. You don't necessarily need it uh, once you're done, so you could just kind of move it, put it where you want. Uh, but having quick access to uh, the parts of this example are going to help you out. Uh, and so now that I've got it in the scene here, I'm going to select the golf cart. Now I have access to all the variables um, and all of the other uh, pieces of the vehicle. And so I believe at least in this step, if I'm not mistaken, the next step was to... Um, grab the variables component uh well i guess we're going to add it to ours and then we grab the uh the variables from it and so i'm going to go back to the top level of my hoverboard i'm going to add a component call it variables we don't have any yet that's fine um and i'm pretty sure that's what it says to do is just to go to the example and copy its component so we're just going to do that so i'm going to go back to the golf cart here at the variables component, you'll see there are three dots here. Click that, and then you can do a copy component here. Go back to your hoverboard. Go to your variables here. Click the right, uh, the three dots there on the right, and then you can hit paste component values, and that'll give you all of the, the values from the example right there on your hoverboard. So um, if you're here, I'm pretty sure, let me make sure. At this point, now you're going to be trying to sync up all of the pieces of your own unique vehicle and pasting that over um, the example pieces. So here we're going to match up a few things. On our hoverboard, actually, I'm going to get rid of the cart for now um, since I don't need it. I'll put it back if I need it again. I probably will, but uh, for now, 
I'm just going to grab. Alert, he, will, he will need it. Yeah, I will. I'm just getting <laughs> it out of the way so I don't confuse myself or anybody else. Yeah. Um, and so for here, uh, I'm just going to grab my wheel colliders and all the rest of the pieces that I have in this uh, example, and I'm just going to replace them. And so I've got my seat spot. I've got my, uh, so I'm going to drag that over here. It says it's missing. That's an easy way to know. Uh, that's another reason why I got rid of it. Uh, and so you got the start interactable and the stop. You'll see I made mine called drive and exit. And so I'm just going to replace those. Um, so they're no longer missing. Now I've got wheel colliders. It says they're also missing. And so you'll see I got my front. Uh, you know what? I completely got rid of the example order. So now I don't know what the order is. If I remember correctly, it was front left, front right, back left, back right. Uh, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I'm going to know if it's wrong. Um, and it's good to, and you want to make sure when you're doing this too that um, you do it the front wheels and then the last two are the back wheels because right. that next variable, you have the back wheels variable and we're specifying the bottom two. I mean, you can change which ones are checked there, but we right. check the bottom two just so we know which are the front, which are the back. Yeah, it's super important to make sure these are right. If you don't do this right, you're going to have a bad time. Um, and so <laughs> since I deleted my example, um, as a beginner, I shouldn't have done that, but I kind of, I've done this enough times and now I'm pretty sure that's the order. Um, but now here's what's also important. Just, just like Jake said, make sure that your back wheels are the ones that are checked and then make sure that w however you do this, if you were setting up a regular vehicle or hoverboard or whatever, um, just make sure that the order of your vehicles again, or, or sorry, your wheels again, line up exactly just like this. Uh, now here's the thing. On a real vehicle, we would have real wheel meshes that we would have to line up and make sure that it all works well with the wheel colliders and all. Here's the fun part about a hoverboard. We don't have to deal with that. But you still have to, in order to not have to modify this uh, script any, right, we're just going to plug in some fake ones. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make some child objects of my model here. You, you know, They don't exist, but I'm just going to create some empty ones. And we're just going to call them exactly. Uh, like we did the others, except it's not a collider. We're just not going to put that. Uh, so I'm going to do front right. Um, let's see. You know, I can just copy them and paste them. You can. Command D, Control D, duplicate. Yeah, we could do that too. Let's see. Uh, just said BL right, back left, and back right. And for and these, I also. I was just saying, for these also, I try and make sure they're in the same order as my colliders, like when I put them in the variables. Um, oh, absolutely right. Um, so I'm going to go back to there, and we're just going to put them in the exact same order that we have here. So it's going to be my front left, my front right. This really matters if it's visual, but since it's not here, it won't matter if it's funky looking or not. It's going to work because <laughs> we're not using them. Uh, but it's going to make our script work, right? If you don't actually plug these in here, the script's not going to work right. So, uh, and if you're missing any of these things, you could you could potentially have a, a vehicle that doesn't work. So you want to make sure that you do all of this uh, correctly. And so now I've got. Uh, see, this is I think I don't know if this camera target piece is in the in the instructions. I mentioned this in my uh, tutorial. I think it's oh, in the example. Did I skip that? I, I wrote. I put together the doc, so maybe I missed that. But that's yeah, it's all good. Um, I saw. You know, I went through all of this. You know, very meticulously, and I think the camera object is definitely in the uh, example. Yeah. I don't think it's in the doc here. Um, but you know, we're going to go ahead and make it. Um, and and here's the way that I sort of playing around with this understood it. So the camera object is when you when you jump into a vehicle uh, and you spin the camera around however you want. This is where it's going to center what the camera is looking at and so on the example it sort of puts the camera in front of the car which is great because you know the example golf cart is kind of high and so for a camera if you're trying to drive it if it's too low it doesn't you know you can't see the road well uh, and so in some cases that may be what you want but also i found that if you've got a, a low riding vehicle you may want to lower that a little bit more in some cases if you want to take pictures with your vehicle uh, or in this case, a hoverboard, you may want to move that more to the center of where your character is so that you'll get more of a, you know, that person in the center of the shot. So that's just a little bit more of what I uh, kind of found out there. Uh, and so at least on the hoverboard, I'm 
I'm kind of assuming I want to take a picture of myself, you know, while I'm, you know, driving it around or whatever. There's nothing in the way for me to not be able to see. So I'm just going to put it in the center of uh, where I would be standing if I was riding on it. So I'm going to create a another empty uh, underneath my hoverboard, and I'm just going to call it camera object. Make sure I spelled that right, yeah. And so I'm going to go back to the hoverboard. I'm going to replace that in there. with this new one that I made and also my center of mass it looks like that I forgot to mention there and then so the last piece is the sounds uh, I did forget to add the sounds onto my object so I'm going to add that back to my scene for just a minute just like Jake said I forgot it I'm gonna copy it and just add that uh, to my hoverboard and that's actually a uh, a cheat that I learned for vehicles is that you could really just take the sounds from the golf cart and put it on yours. And then later, if you wanted to get a more realistic sound, like if you had a hoverboard sound or something or whatever your vehicle is and you wanted to replace these, I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of the golf cart again because, again, I don't need it. Now you'll see that I got the sounds built into my own hoverboard. Um, and so... Even though they say they're missing now, I can just go into here and just replace them, um, you know, just as they were. So I'm going to use the built-in stuff for now again, so I don't, um, I don't have to go through any additional steps here. But if you want to replace um, any of these sounds, it really is as simple as going to uh, the sound object itself. You can click in here and you can see how it just references an MP3 file or a WAV file or something like that. So if you add your own uh, sound files into any of these uh, directories, your own asset uh, folder or whatnot, you can go into the sound objects here and you can replace uh, with your own custom MP3 or your own custom WAV. You can just put that there and it'll play that sound instead. You can also mess with some of these uh, uh, sound options here. You can make, make it louder. Um, you can use Spatial Blend or turn that off, whatever you want, but uh, that's completely up to you uh, and cosmetics. So I'm just going to leave what's there for now again. And so I think, Jake, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I got a whole vehicle built here. Um, that should be drivable. I think so. You know, I was wondering, like, I was just thinking about this. Does does a hoverboard have, like, does it have sound? Like, I, I was like, so I brought up the Back to the Future scene, and I'm like, does this actually... I think it does. Hey, 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 yeah, anyway, we could just sit here and watch this whole scene, but I was just like, does, it have, does the hoverboard have sound? Anyway. So, I'm, you know, and here's the other thing that I, I, I try to see. No, I'm not even done yet. This is not drivable. I don't even have a script on here or nothing. I still need my example again and all kind of stuff. Oh yeah, there was. Oh, sorry, I was focused on bringing out that video. So when you said, "Is it drivable?" No, yeah, we're still. No, no, no it's certainly not. Yeah, do you uh, have the center of mass on there? I noticed that was missing before. I do. Uh, I think in, I, the, in the in the script. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is there. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I think I got everything on here, and I'm so spoiled because, like, you remember when I showed you that shortcut? I forgot that I like I really didn't have to do all this when I built my hoverboard. I I took the shortcut, but I'm just showing people anyway. Um, oh, that's good. So the shortcut, the people are gonna be mad after we get done with all this, and they go, "Wait, wait a minute, because I could have just done this." But well, it's good. It's good to know like how like how the different components work, especially like if you want to go and build like your own vehicle and stuff too. Um, it's right. super helpful. The only difference between a hoverboard and like any other vehicle is just basically we're just not showing the wheel meshes. Like there's no wheel meshes to visually show. Um, otherwise it's just a car that you stand on basically and, and the other difference being is that we're going to add the animation so you're standing versus sitting right so i'm just going to throw my example back in there since i still need it and uh i think the next part was we actually need to copy the uh, script so I'll make sure i'm not skipping anything here 
So we got that part, set the variables, add a script machine. So I think. Uh... Yeah, the and the yeah the last piece was the. Did you uh, go through the variables in terms of the the max drive? I didn't edit it. I just left. Uh, I guess what the example had. I mean, we can go over that real quick if you want. Um, these are some things you can change uh, inside of. I'm sorry. Let me go back to my hoverboard so I know exactly what we've gone over so far. Um, you can edit some of these, like the max drive. I found that, like you know, it's not just like a you know infinite number. You can just keep increasing, and it'll go faster. Um, it'll spin those wheels a little faster, but I don't think it'll make your car go any faster. There's well, some there's, torque that you can add yeah. to it. Well, the max drive is like the max torque, basically, in, in Newton meter. So the only things to change here are max drive, um, max uh, uh, the brake force, yeah, max drive, brake force, and max steer. So, yeah, max drive is like your maximum torque um, in Newton meters. Your brake force is like your brake torque, essentially, in Newton meters. So that should be more than your max drive so that way you can apply enough force to like stop the vehicle um and then max steer is like in degrees it's the angle the max steering like the maximum degrees your wheels can turn so if like you're an off-roading vehicle you'll have like wider turns if you're a sports car you'll have like something maybe closer to 25 degrees um so so you can you can change that so the other like in terms of the speed like how you alter the speed of the vehicle one is having the max torque and then the other is if we look at the wheel colliders um it's changing like various properties in regards to like the friction um and things like that on the wheels so like how much essentially there we didn't i didn't add this in the docs um because it's more on like the unit this is because the docs are more like how to set it up in spatial um but if you look at other like specific like unity vehicle or wheel collider tutorials it'll go through um how the different properties for a wheel collider basically affect the the vehicle so there's those different things to to consider um i saw D david uh over on youtube is asking how the driving controls map to the keyboard or quest controls well i'm glad you asked that because i think we're about to get right into it um yeah so at least it, let's see the next part was um the script machine so that's actually the whole brain around what actually controls the vehicle and that's the part why we wouldn't be able to drive this yet um but the fun part's coming so we got to go back to um at least uh well let's actually go ahead and just add a blank script machine so we had a script machine we don't have a script yet but you see we have the golf cart script here you can, I mean, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I think we can either, let's just do it the way that the instructions say. I'm going to go back here. I'm just going to create a new. And since I'm just playing with this, I'm going to call it hoverboard 2. Uh, and I think that's saved into my assets folder there. Yep. And it's going to be blank for now. We open it up you'll see that it's just got uh, i think a couple of us at the on it's like an on load or something like when when we first load into the scene type of node and like another one here we go so it's on start and then on update so i don't actually don't need either one of those I'll delete that and close this so i'm gonna go back to our golf cart if you look in the inspector on its uh, script machine, you'll see that it's referencing a golf cart script. You can click that, and it'll take you right to it. And you can open it up, and you'll see this is the entire um, script for vehicles. Now, we'll hit Control-A. That's actually going to select everything. And we'll hit Control-C to copy. I'm going to close this, and then I'm going to open back our hoverboard script. Again, I'm going to go to the script machine and click it. It's going to take us right to it. I'm going to open it up and hit Control V, uh, or just right click and paste. And that's going to paste the entire script here on our on our new hoverboard script. So now we can actually edit this and do whatever we want with it, uh, and it you know will stay independent of the example here. 
Uh, we already added, or we needed to add a synced object component. We hadn't done that yet. So I'm going to go. You're on the golf cart there. That's a golf cart, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry. Um, sync object. And I know we need to add synced variables. And on this one, uh, I don't. I don't think I have to look. We want the drive, steer, brake, and is honking, right? And one more, the the second one from the top. Yeah. Is controlled? Yeah. I can, I can never actually remember if it's is controlled or is controlled locally, but it's that one. Well, well let's take a look. So that way we're not uh, making assumptions there. So I'm going to go back to the example golf cart script. Well, I know, I know it's the second one from. I know it's the second one from the top. I just can never remember if. Oh, which one? Oh, yeah. yeah it's the is controlled. It's, I'm pretty sure it's the it's the is controlled. So basically, You're right. the synced the synced object um, uh, component is just base. It's part of like our multi layer, uh, multiplayer like net code stack. So as things change, like as these variables change, like as Josh, you know, he's driving his vehicle around and he changes the input there, that data is syncing across everyone else who's in that space at the same time. So they all see him moving the same speed or hear the horn honking or all those things. It's basically allowing that to sync across. So if you didn't add that, um, you wouldn't see him moving around or hear the, the horn honking uh, when using that vehicle. So I think I'm ready to go. You know what? My model's not even skinned. That's another thing that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, so I can, let's see, where's my hoverboard? I got a skin for this, so I could just make that look less ugly for now. Do what? There we go. There you go. Okay. The only other thing is, uh, depending on, you know, we can, we're going to test this out in the sandbox, is making sure either you have a floor underneath it, or we can test out just the vehicle like on its own as a prefab object, it's probably just easier just to um, just put like a plane underneath it so it doesn't fall to the. Oh yeah, theory. that's that's very true. And I think you have to add. Well, if it's a space, you have to add all that other stuff. But if it's a prefab, I don't think you have to. Um, right. If it's a prefab, yeah. If it's a, if it's just a prefab object, yeah, then we can test just that object. But yeah, if it's a space, you'll need an entrance point and a thumbnail camera as the only things you so, should need. Here's what we'll do. I'll just uh, I'll just make a new prefab and throw that. You know, I'll have to add the prefab uh, object component to it. Yeah. So if you're at home, you don't have to do this. Uh, this is just something you can do if you want to drop it into somebody else's space um, to you know create a prefab of it. But uh, I've already done that, and so actually I needed to add it to the the prefab, didn't I? I added it to the one in my scene. There you go. So now I should be able to drop that right in there, and then we well, can make sure. Is that oh your active package is the prefab? Okay, yeah. I'm just making sure your active package is a prefab object. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that should be it. So we could we could test it if we want. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, it's making me save this scene. I guess so. Probably good practice. All right. I hope I didn't get embarrassed here and then this thing doesn't work in front of everybody or I fall over or something. It's definitely going to have me sitting on it because we haven't um, we haven't updated to the standing um, uh, animation yet, but we'll at least get it driving first and then we'll do the next part. That'll be the, the cherry on top. That's actually something that I, you know, I had to play around with a little bit uh, to get working uh, properly because it's not, it's not exactly the most elegant uh, way of doing it. Because you know, unlike with walking or things that would easily be, you know, you could just say I'm going to loop this uh, in Unity, and and you know, as you walk, it's going to loop it for you. In this case, since it's more of like a pose, when you when you animate it. Um, it only animates it for as long as, you know, as the animation is good for. So you have to sort of make it a little longer than it's supposed to be. 
So obviously I'm like, I'm sitting on it. I'm not supposed to be sitting on it, but you can see that, you know, <laughs> that fell over too. You're writing, you're writing it like a, like a broom or something. Yeah. yeah so that Harry Potter broomstick. I play around with was all of the, the different weights and the width of the vehicle and all. And so instead of wasting a lot of time playing with it again, I'm actually just going to replace I mean, obviously it drives. Uh, so that's all the correct things, but I'm going to replace it with the, with the prefab that I already built and show a shortcut on how to make one of these really quickly. So I got rid of that one. Uh, and I'm going to show you a shortcut, how to build one, um, you know, a, a very much faster way. And it definitely works. So I'm going to take the, uh, example, which is, uh, the golf cart here. I'm going to throw it in my scene real quick. People are going to hate us for this. I'm going to show you how easy this is. Uh, you right click, go to the prefab, unpack, and then so, you know, now I have my uh, hoverboard model wherever I decide to put it. There it is. Uh, and so here it is. I'm going to just toss it into the scene as well. Uh, I do think I'd, I'd, I'm i going to end up having to rotate it no matter what. Uh, but I'm just going to replace this model by putting it underneath the golf cart. And then I'm going to delete the model of the golf cart. And so now, even though it says golfer, I can rename this to hoverboard. Uh, and so it's got the, all of the components that the golf cart had, except I replaced the model. And I'm done with it. It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the one thing, one thing you're seeing is the yeah, that's visuals. Right. Yeah, and that's you true. Add, so you can just still add have to do that. objects, but still have to do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create um, four like we did before. Um, and just roll D, right? There we go. Uh, front left, front right, back left, back right. And you still have to go into it and reassign those. So everything else is going to be good, but we're just going to drop those in there. And you'll see that I'm even doing it, I can compare this time, I'm doing it in the same order as my wheel colliders. And so that would work as a regular vehicle as well, um, if they were real uh, real meshes there. And so this, this could actually work. Uh, I'm going to actually just drop that in here as a new uh, prefab. And then, uh, again, I forgot to add the prefab object. And I can just replace that right in there. Uh, and actually, you know what? I'm not going to embarrass myself by not having a skin. Got to have that dope skin, that retro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. I'm not going <laughs> to do it to myself. All right. So this time, hopefully, it won't it won't fall over so badly. I think the, um, the example of the cart ha actually has all of the, um, the configuration needed for the uh, the hoverboard to kind of work well enough, at least for a video. <laughs> and fun fact that the the um, the uh, spatial person who worked on implementing drivable vehicles and built the golf cart example is also Josh. So there's something about Josh and vehicles and Unity at spatial. So, <laughs> but. Yep, so yeah, I'm like totally sitting in the wrong spot because it's it thinks it's a golf cart, but that's the part that we got to go in and fix, right? So at least we're at that point now. So I'm going to get out of here. All right. So now the last thing that we have to do is make sure that you know, of course, we have an animation for the standing part, um, and that it's lined up properly. And so instead, again, of uh, instead of wasting a lot of time trying to figure that part out, I've already got it built, and I'm just going to put it in here for us. Uh, so I can show you how how I did it. Uh, and so it was this uh, first hoverboard prefab. I'm stick that back in there. Um, just going to unpack it for now and then find it. There we go. So what I did in order to make this work is I first had to go into the script. And it's here. And you'll see that on, underneath the entering and exit vehicle uh, interactables, there's a on interact uh, event for the enter, and there's also one for the exit. 
Uh, and so we'll go uh, into, I'm sorry, uh, it's subgraphs. Let me go back one so I can properly tell people. It's right after the interact. So the subgraph for enter vehicle and exit vehicles we're going to be looking at. So if you go in here, you'll see how it, in the beginning it looked like this. And so uh, let me get rid of that one too there. In the beginning, it looked like this, where it just had input, sit down, and then the rest of the script. What I did was I hijacked it with a, uh, an a animation by just going from input to the animation and then output of the animation to the sit down. Um, and so what that's going to do is have this animation play instead of the sitting. And so what this animation actually is, and you'll see the skew for that, um, Jake, I think I might can just share the SKUs uh, with everyone, right? And they can just use it instead of having to make their own. I believe, I believe, yeah, you should be able to do that. We start, I know we start to work on like a shared database for, for SKUs too. Sure. I mean, I could put it in the uh, chat or whatever we, we need to, but instead of everyone having to make their own, I could just share this. It's already working. Um, you know, but if you had to, essentially what you would do is we make a, uh, a custom avatar emote for just this, long animation of you know standing on top of the hoverboard uh, and so that we don't have to do that tonight and you don't have to do that at home uh, i can actually just share this skew i can put in the chat uh, for anybody interested and in that's something that it'll allow me to do here you might get a uh <laughs> yeah one of those where do i type this in at uh or can i uh you may not be able to if you want to send it to me in the private chat i can drop it in the uh i will the chat. there you go cool Share that with everybody for me. Uh, and so everybody working at home, you don't have to build your own animation for this. That SKU will give you a very long animation for standing on your hoverboard. Um, and then the only other thing that you'll need to do um, to edit this to work properly is you'll also want to do something when you exit the vehicle so that it won't continue to do that animation. Um, for me, if you want to be cool like me, I like to do a dab when I jump off. And so I'll share that <laughs> SKU with you as well. <laughs> but you'll you'll do the same thing by just hijacking uh the output um or the input and output for the uh you know uh, exit vehicle portion of the script and so i'm showing you how to do that there so i'm gonna copy that skew close that i'm gonna go back to the chat and give that to you as well there you go and so again for everybody at home that is the the two skews for um for the hoverboard standing animation and also for the dab and you can actually use that um for anything in your worlds if you just want to have uh people throwing a dab up so <laughs> that's kind of my move uh and then so look i'm gonna actually just test this one because uh, i believe that's the uh well i don't know if i actually put the my hoverboard in there or not if i didn't i'll replace it uh, and i'll just show you how that works really quickly No, I sure didn't, so let's put the right one there. Let's close the sandbox. And so while this is loading up, I'm just going to recap real quick. Easiest way to do this is just replace the model in the, in the example. Make sure you make your fake uh, wheels either way. Uh, since we don't see them, it's not terribly important where they're uh, position the wheel colliders are but if you're using the example then you shouldn't have to worry about that um, and then you just want to insert your um, standing animation inside the script uh, in order to make it look like he's standing on uh, the hoverboard that's really the only part that was kind of tricky and so you'll see at, uh, I think I ran into that invisible wall there but you'll see now that I actually have uh, the animation inserted uh, into the um, interactive for when I jump on it. it, it looks like I'm standing on top of the hoverboard, but I'm still able to drive it with the WASD keys just like a vehicle. And if I exit, with the dismount, cool down, <laughs> and then I'm back to walking. Okay. Woo! <laughs> standing ovation. Go dab. I can even beep. Dab. like. <laughs> There we go. So I hope that was helpful. Um, and, and I'm 
uh, certainly uh, willing to take questions or uh, anything like that on the side for anybody that needs help going forward. If, you know, if it's a couple of days later in the discord or something like that, it's a very easy thing to do. Yeah. I think there was a question. How did you sure. get the animation? Sure. So that's where we can talk about Mixamo. Uh, it's a super free website. Super cool. Let's, let's take a look at that. Do you want to drive this time? Uh, Jay, or do you want me to do it? No, keep going. Yeah. That's okay. So I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, sorry. I'm going to go to entire and I'm just going to pull up the website real quick. And I'm probably going to expose my um, email here, but I'm okay. If people send me messages, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so all right now uh now what's cool about mixamo is it's absolutely free you don't need uh anything more than just an account uh with adobe in order to take advantage of this cool stuff so um you know of course for the hoverboard um i was actually just looking for like a skateboard animation so i typed in skateboard there's a couple different ones that you know we can grab but this is the one that i used in particular uh don't mind the bowser <laughs> <laughs> that I was making the other day. Uh, but th you can get tons of animations for here. That's the one that I got. Um, and in order to get it, all you have to do is hit download here. You can do it with or without the skin. Uh, and it'll give you an F FBX file that once you download and put it into your project, it'll look something like this. And so when you have the model with the animation, the animation is just the little triangle looking part. And you can hit control D to duplicate it out of the model and into your project so that you can, um, in, in my case, I had to loop it. So, or, or, well, it's not really a loop. Let me, let me actually fix that. So uh, what I had to do is I had to actually open up the animation here and these are all of the keys. I know we didn't really want to get into this tonight, uh, uh, Jake, but just as a quick thing, if you already know what you're doing with this, all I did was I just selected all of the keyframes in the animation and I pasted it over and over and over. So it just, you know, I probably did it about 10 times or something like that so that it would, it would play long enough for anybody riding the hoverboard, but I stopped it uh, when we got off. So it's not a problem if it's too long, you know, you're going to interrupt it uh, when you get off anyway. So for now, unless there's a more elegant way of us adding animations to the vehicle sitting position, that's just what I came up with. It's a little bit of, of a, uh, theatrics and, and uh, no know, that, that that works <laughs> that works the only other thing i would change is you could do with the animation itself could be a, i believe the animation itself could be just looped versus okay. like having to copy it like 10 times i hope so, so. I, well if there's a way we can do that i would, I would totally let's do it right now if uh, if you know how to do it because i'm i i didn't spend too much time looking into that i could totally be wrong yeah. um it works if for my video up, <laughs> Yeah, if you bring up, if you click on the animation file for the standing and go into the inspector, you don't, you don't even have to go into this um, and go, click on whichever the animation. Um, I think it was like just the, yeah, it was just the root. So like the actual like animation, yeah, just click it once and click go to the inspector. And then, yeah, so you see at the top there's loop time. So if you click edit, in the top right mm -hmm. and then where did it go um yeah loop well, time is... at the top yeah. click go. that and then scroll down and click apply so now it'll just loop um, well once you the start problem, it. the problem that i had and, and it may it may work let's try it out i i felt like i tried this and it did it but it didn't loop like it just went back to him sitting and so i, I could be wrong Maybe I did something wrong. Uh, I ended up having to do it that way. But if we want to try it out, I think the only thing I have to do... It depends how we're playing, I guess, that animation. I have to look and that's the, the... You know, that's, I don't want to get too much in the weeds of it because it's I, you know it could be either way, and I don't want to confuse people. I'll certainly look into it, though, because if it's an easier or better way to do it, I would have rather done it that way. Uh, but yeah. the other thing, and, and you know, we won't get into that, but I had that second um, animation for the kick. And so if mm -hmm. somebody braver than me wants to go in there and play around with that script a little bit more to add the kick on Accelerate, that'd be pro. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that's awesome. Did that answer that's the awesome. question, though? I want to make sure we, you know, we're addressing all that. I think so. I'll wait to see if there's a follow-up comment there. But 
Um, yeah, Mixamo is, is such an awesome tool and it's totally free. Like it's not, you don't need like an Adobe subscription to use it. You just need an right. Adobe account and you can, and there's so many, I think there's like gotta be like, I think hundreds of animations and they even have their own. If, also, if you're looking for avatars, like you, you want like a custom avatar model, there's like dozens of custom avatar models like in there too that you can use that are that are really cool. And then you can combine them too. So you can have the avatar and you can have it with an animation or That's download great. them separately. Um, so it's a good resource for both if you're looking for some free avatars. Um, yeah, certainly. And the the animations have been going crazy with tons of people like, hey, how are you how are you swimming? How are you spinning? How are you dabbing? And all this stuff. I'm like yeah. most of this stuff is free on Mixamo. And if you once you start realizing that everything you see there you can bring right into spatial with and I've got videos for that. You know, we don't have to go over that tonight, but if you you know if you want to learn a little bit more about how to, you know, bring that stuff into spatial for uh, it takes this much time and no money. So yeah, the best that's the best thing is free. So yeah, the only other thing, um, if for I was actually just making a video for for this today, we'll probably put out maybe tomorrow or Friday, is if you wanted to do like a totally custom animation, if you're like a dancer or maybe there isn't the animation that you want and you can like act it out yourself. There's this um tool, there's a couple of them, but the one we'll highlight in the video is move.ai. Um, so all you need is like, like a, mi a minimum, like two iPhones. Um, you can potentially use like some webcams too. You set them up like facing you and like you, it, and it just, it's like a, a suitless mocap. So you can just like have the iPhones pointing at you, do whatever movement you want to do. And then you can export that as an FBX and bring it into Unity and then bring that into Spatial. So if you've got two iPhones, it's, I haven't I haven't gone through the whole process myself, but I've seen other people that have done it. It's it's pretty sweet. So I do I do have some. They're not you know new new or anything, but you know, I've worked in IT for a while, so there's uh, plenty of opportunities for when we were you know replace devices and stuff for us to get you know old ones and stuff like that. So I've got my hands on a few older uh, iPhone devices, and I and, you know I successfully used one as a motion capture for. It worked with like VR chat and stuff like that. It's barely usable, but I, it worked. And yeah. so that's where I grabbed them uh, for that. And now that you've mentioned that, that's given me just, I don't that's know awful. that like, like I don't have any moves well enough for like, I'm not a dancer. So if I, not, I mean, you, I was, you're not doing the dabs in real life and stuff like that. There, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I try, you know, but like, I, I don't know that, that, there, it would be horrible for me to try to motion capture any kind of dance moves that, that I've got going on and putting them in the game. But yeah. just the idea of it is very uh, tempting. I may end yeah. up doing Even if the, yeah, if it's like, a, it could be like a simple thing. Like, I feel like I haven't, maybe there is in Mixmo, but like, just like it could be simple, just like you driving a car, just like plop yourself in a chair and just yeah. like go like this and it can capture that. Just like a simple That's true because they don't have that. I, I looked. I specifically yeah. looked for that and, and they didn't have that. So yeah, maybe I'll just make one and then share it with the community. Yeah. I think you can use anything for move.ai could be anything. I think iPhone eight and above. So like you can use some older phones. It doesn't have to be like a super recent oh, one. Okay. Well, I definitely, I think I have some of those. We're going to do that. All right. Let's do it. Wow. Look, I've been missing out on all this chat here. I've, Cause I've been looking at my own screen. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I've been I've been answering them, so you, like you're good, okay. you're good. Um, and then we'll do like another question or two, and then we'll call call it a night. But um, Anna is asking, when you create a world, how are you guys working out the mesh vertices with complex models? Um, like I think is that question, like how do we know, or how are we optimizing? I guess the question is more like how do we optimize. Um, vertices and complex models. I don't know if, uh, and then she, had, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll ask her follow up question afterwards. But did you? I have a, a thought there. I don't know if you wanted to. Sure. To I mean, no, you, you can had. you can have that one. I, I did touch up a little bit on optimization on one of my early videos. Um, but I, you know, that's definitely a complex question that it could be easy or it could be in depth. And depending on the model you're you're talking about, uh, there could be a whole lot of steps or it could be something simple. Um, yeah yeah with yeah with vertice count like we so we show you that in the scene vitals in 
in Unity. That's something the spatial toolkit like provides. Um, so the for yeah for vertices, I mean, most of the time you can use you would bring I would bring the model like into Blender, and then you can use the decimate modifier to essentially like reduce the vertice count. Um, it, it depends how complicated your your model is. Uh, she's saying the ones I'm creating are very simple, but they are 400,000. Yeah. So, I mean, if it's, if they're simple models, but they have a high vertice count, then I would use like bring that into to Blender and, and use the decimate modifier and, and try and bring that down. Cause the two things that definitely hurt, I mean, there's many things, but like definitely two of the big things that hurt um, performance the most are um, like vertice count slash like parts in a model. Like you can have like a simple model that has like a hundred parts to it. Like that'll just like tank your performance, especially on the quest. Um, the Oculus quest is like really bad for handling complex models and also texture size. Um, so definitely um, like a lot of people have put like 4K or 8K textures like in their models, which is crazy, uh, crazy high. It definitely does not need to be that high. So we definitely recommend less than like, you know, up to 2K, like 2048 by 2048 for, for textures. Um, and then just one more question. The recommended um, recommendation is less than 15,000 vertices per object. I mean, per it's, so I believe it's up to five. Um, or the, I don't have the scene vertices open in front of me. Um, I just rely on the scene vitals menu there, but um, it's per scene, like per object doesn't matter so much. It, it, it only matters if you're publishing that um, object as its own individual prefab. If it's part of like an overall scene, then it's really more kind of like the scene, the overall scene vitals, um, which I have, I don't have it open in my Unity in front of me, but um, it's more than 15,000. I'll say that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh particularly remember there was like one one model i was playing with i think for a video and it was it was a scene but it was uh you know you had different parts and you you know your scene vitals won't tell you anything in particular like you know which one of your objects is going to be your culprit or anything and you know right off the bat but if, i think if you deep dive into some of the the logs there if you open up some of that it'll start to show you like what objects you have that are driving that up and so what I found was quickly that there was like one set of objects in particular in my scene that was just killing my vitals. And so I, I quickly, I just went in there and just removed that object and, and I was all in the green. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to replace that. And so a lot of time, you know, if you get stuff from uh, Sketchfab or whatever, these models may not be optimized for uh, use in spatial or anything like that, but you don't necessarily have to go decimating everything uh, to heck either. Sometimes you can you can really look at those logs and and see, um, or the console, you know, and see what's what's your culprit is. And sometimes just fix that and leave everything else alone. You'll be fine. Because uh, I've actually yeah. been very impressed with the amount of, um, and and this is just me talking here. I, I actually took uh, I extracted some uh, like a city out of another game that was actually, you know, it's, it's an older game, but at the time it was like, you know, you needed a beefy computer to even run this just natively on your computer. And yeah. I was able to extract all of that model and all the textures and everything, and then load it up in, uh, you know, in spatial in a web browser it was, or even on my phone. I was like, wow, you know, this is uh, you know, really impressive. You know what you can kind of get away with <laughs> you know, with today's <laughs> hardware. So. Yeah, yeah, it's and yeah, the scene vitals like don't like we're if you go above those, like you can still publish your scene or your object or whatever. It's our recommendations. You just run since you're what you're building with the toolkit is going to run in a web browser, and that could be a web browser on any kind of machine, basically everything from like technically like Chromebook to like an M1 Mac, you know, and running on mobile phones, also like a huge range of mobile phones and in VR. Those scene vitals are essentially like our recommendations and best practices to, as best as we can, ensure that your scene will run optimally across all those platforms. And like you said, I've had scenes um, that have like 8 million vertices, mm -hmm. 
that run just fine. It loads fast and runs super fine in my browser. Also, I'm running an M1 Mac, so it's not like the most, you know, like um, representative sample, but right. considering right. how fast it loaded and how well it ran, like in Chrome, like it was, it was pretty crazy. The other option I saw someone mention too is you can use LODs or level details. Yes. Um, so basically the, it's right. Like when you play a game, like Grand Theft Auto, right? Like the closer you get to something like higher level of detail shows up. Um, so that's another way to, to optimize and also consider optimizing. Like if you have a high poly or high vertices scene, um, consider like if you're built a whole space or an environment, are the high poly stuff or like the stuff in the backdrop, if you have like mountains in the backdrop, like those, could be optimized. Sometimes you might have something that's super high vertice or super high texture that like most people won't even see. It could be like the mountain in the background or the backside, right? Um, make sure those are optimized too because then you're just hurting performance for for really no reason. Um, right. So take that, take that into consideration. But um, yeah, anyway, thanks Josh for, for walking us through that. And now we're all hoverboard masters. Now we're going to see yeah. hoverboards all over the place in spatial, I hope. So, so. no problem. Like, I want to make sure everybody understands because uh, I I probably could have done a better job of explaining some of that. But at least on my, my YouTube channel, if you check it out, I've got a video that I kind of spent a lot of time making sure that it, it made sense and everything. It wasn't live, you know. Uh, so if you need a recap, um, you can do you can use that video to make any you know, uh, vehicle you want, but for hoverboard specifically, um, you know, just to recap, you basically just have to <laughs> make invisible wheels and, and you're golden. So yeah, that's my little the trick. secret. The secret is invisible <laughs> wheels. Yeah. So awesome. So where can people, I put the link to your YouTube at the bottom, but where else can people follow you for more great spatial tutorials and you yeah, sure. Tutorials? Thanks for plugging me there. I, you know, I've, I've enjoyed Spatial now for a little bit. Um, you know, originally I, I had started out on some other platforms, but I found Spatial uh, thanks to some friends of mine um, sometime last year. And I think that I, I was looking for a new Metaverse home right around the time that you guys had just kind of like unveiled the uh, toolkit to the world. And so you guys have just been moving lightning fast. And, it's, you know, I, I can't even keep up anymore. I've, life is like... <laughs> hitting me hard and, and you guys are just coming out with all kind of, I saw the backpack out release today or something like that. Yeah. And like I hadn't even had time to like all the way test it, uh, you know, really good before everybody else gets it. So I'm just, I'm going to get left. In the we're rest. moving. Yeah. We're <laughs> moving like crazy fa yeah, this month too. Like just, we put out vehicles a few weeks ago, like this month, like just today, we, um, we kind of, for developers, we have spatial studios. So you can manage your assets and make those rewardable. And then there's the backpack, which you'll start to see, like as a kind of explorer in spatial, you won't see that until you actually collect your first item. But we haven't like announced that like widely yet. But yeah, we're, this is kind of the first steps in what's going to be the next phase of spatial over the next like two or three months, which is like you've built these spaces and like people have spent time in these spaces now, both as a creator and an explorer, like you get the opportunity to be like rewarded um, on, on both fronts. So more to come on that. But yeah. We're like, we're not, we're like all gas, no brakes with that vehicle pun with the updates. So yeah, appreciate you. awesome. you've been keeping up with it better than I've been keeping up with it. Your tutorials have always been like ahead of mine. So <laughs> it's, you know, we're grateful for you, man. So well, I'm going to give you a chance to catch up with me. I've got so much going on uh, <laughs> right now and not just with, you know, with the metaverse and all, if you've been keeping up with me on Twitter at all, I've got to. Uh, I'm, I've got a bunch of chickens I just started raising. So I used to be a chicken farmer and I'm getting back into that. So I got a little <laughs> bit of, uh, you know, my tech life going on and I also have a little bit of, um, you know, I'm raising birds on the side. So that's, that's going to take up a little bit of my weekend, uh, here in the next couple of weekends. But then after that, I'm going to hit, uh, making videos again, really hard. So stay tuned. We need that. We need a chicken coop live stream. I think just like all on like checking on Josh's chickens. I mean, I'm do. thinking about doing it. I've been posting videos on my Twitter, and it's funny because you know I've got this like VR brand, but for some reason my audience also still they like chicken <laughs> videos. So I've just been <laughs> posting them, whatever, man. Maybe there's some crossover there. We can do an immersive chicken coop experience. I don't know. Yeah. Like that could be a fun game. <laughs> I think, and my, and my my goal is just to teach people to do what you love, man. That's and so for me, I like video games, but I'll you know I also love um, not just raising birds, but I have I have kids. 
and I like to, uh, I mean, look, eggs are getting expensive. I'm not going to lie. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I like to feed my kids good food. And so, um, you know, and they eat eggs a lot. Uh, and so, you know, raising chickens has been uh, sort of a twofold uh, thing for me. It, it's, they're wonderful animals. So, you know, it's emotionally, you know, for me, that's a, it's a good thing, but also being able to feed my, my children. Well, um, it's something that I, you know, I, I don't take that for granted. So it's a good well, thing I'm getting into and it makes me happy, but also vi making video games make me happy. And so I, I want to <laughs> teach people like, you know, both like have some equilibrium in your life, um, do things that make you happy and, and, you know, chase that dream. I love it. I love it. Well, cool. Well, Josh, thanks again. Thanks for everybody who tuned in uh, for the last hour or so. I'm going to go get on my hoverboard game now too and uh, surf around the metaverse. So appreciate it. Have a good night. And for those who joined us from um, all over the world, a good morning. It's a, it was a late night stream. But yeah, thanks everybody. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody. One. Thank you. Bye-bye.